Porsche's latest electric vehicle is poised to dominate the market. Whether catering to those seeking affordability or luxury, this compact SUV is captivating hearts and snatching sales across all vehicle segments. Given the widespread desire to own one, Porsche's decision to introduce an electric version of its popular compact SUV, the Macung, as its second electric offering, appears logical. Perhaps the product planners regret not leading with the Macung instead of the Taycan. Dissatisfied with certain aspects of the original Macung's shared platform, such as the height of the front seats, Porsche asserts its autonomy in engineering and designing the hardware for the new electric Macung, built on the premium platform electric PP, architecture. This autonomy stems from the remarkable success of the Macung, with over 850,000 units sold in the past decade. The demand could have been even higher, were it not for the production limitations at the Macung's Leipzig factory in Germany. Although the seating position of the gas-powered Macung was generally well-received, the electric versions, the Macung 4 and the Macung Turbo, feature slightly lower front and rear seats. While this adjustment may go unnoticed by those familiar with the gas-powered Macung, it unmistakably signals an updated model. Inside, enhancements include a 12.6-inch gauge cluster and a 10.9-inch touchscreen integrated into the instrument panel. For enthusiasts of multiple screens, an additional 10.9-inch display for the passenger is available as a $1,570 option, ensuring entertainment on the go. However, to prevent distractions while driving, the driver's view of these screens is blocked when the Macung is not in park, ensuring safety on the road. The interior maintains a pleasing simplicity, with the inclusion of a volume knob and physical HVAC controls positioned below the touchscreen. While the leather-wrapped dashboard adds a touch of luxury, the overall design lacks an extravagant feel, especially accentuated by the black interior of our test cars. Despite a modest 3.4-inch increase in wheelbase compared to the previous Macung model, the interior space doesn't see a significant expansion. Rear seat accommodations comfortably accommodate a six-foot-tall individual without inducing claustrophobia, though leg crossing might be challenging behind an average driver. Similar to the design of a 911, there's a front trunk, or frunk, with limited 3 cubic feet of space, complementing the larger 18 cubic feet of storage under the hatch. Turning to the electric car specifications, the new platform incorporates a 95.0 kilowatt-hour battery pack beneath the floor, offering an estimated range of 250 to 300 miles according to car and driver. Similar to the Taycan, the electric Macung boasts an 800-volt architecture facilitating fast charging capabilities. Porsche claims it can charge from 10 to 80 percent in approximately 21 minutes, equivalent to the duration of a commercial-free episode of Seinfeld. On slower AC connections, the onboard charger can handle up to 11.0 kilowatts, requiring roughly 10 hours for a full charge from empty. Setting aside the technical details, let's delve into the driving experience of an engine-less Macomb. The absence of engine noise contributes to a serene environment, particularly aided by optional thermal and acoustic glass $920, in the Macomb 4 and Macomb Turbo models we tested. For an additional $490, electric sport sound provides a more audible driving soundtrack, but the experience proved overwhelming, prompting us to opt for its deactivation after experiencing discomfort. It's advisable to save your money in this regard. The Macung 4 and Turbo, both featuring a 402 horsepower output, share a 234 horsepower front motor. While the Macung 4 is equipped with a 375 horsepower rear motor, the turbo receives a more potent 630 horsepower rear unit, although it never independently achieves 630 horsepower. The combined power output of the front and rear units totals 630 horsepower in the turbo. Activating launch control, exclusively available from a standstill, unleashes maximum power for 10 seconds. Under normal driving conditions, the Macung 4 delivers 382 horsepower, while the turbo boasts 576 horses. With instant torque, 479 lbfd in the 4 and 811 in the turbo, both models respond promptly to throttle inputs. However, the Macung 4's performance off the line may not be as impressive, achieving a claimed 4.9 seconds 0 to 60 miles per hour time which pales in comparison to the turbo's claimed 3.1-second sprint. While electric SUVs accelerating like sports cars or supercars are becoming more common, 
the Mekong sets itself apart by excelling in handling. Despite weighing over 5,000 pounds, its lower center of gravity, reduced by 5.5 inches, aids in managing its mass when cornering. Both models feature responsive steering, with electric Mekongs boasting a 15% quicker steering ratio and natural weighting. Rear axle steering, optional on both variants, enhances stability at high speeds and reduces the turning circle to a car-like 36.4 feet at low speeds. Adaptive dampers and adjustable air springs come standard on both the 4 and turbo, ensuring controlled body movements and bolstering driver confidence near the limits of cornering. Additionally, the turbo includes a standard active rear differential for torque vectoring, while the 4 offers it as an optional feature. The ride quality of the electric Mekong is supple yet firm, striking a balance between comfort and responsiveness. If you prioritize isolation and a gentle ride, the larger BMW i7 might better suit your preferences. However, in terms of direct competition, options are limited. While the Mercedes EQE SUV approaches in size and price, its focus seems to lean towards isolation rather than engagement. Similarly, the Tesla Model Y and Model X share a similar form factor but lack the driving dynamics that make the Mekong enjoyable. Acura ZDX aims to rival the electric Mekong, but its debut is still pending. Additionally, BMW's 9.3, though anticipated, is still months away. Notably, Hyundai's 641 horsepower Ionic 5N poses a potential direct competitor to the Mekong for the first time. In Europe, the gas-powered Mekong will no longer be available, while in the US, customers will retain the option of gas or electric variants. Gasoline-powered models will persist on the old platform with minimal changes. A comparison of prices may initially suggest a significant premium for the electric Mekong, but upon closer examination, the price difference between the Mekong 4 and its gas equivalent, the 375 horsepower Mekong S, is approximately $6,500. As for the turbo variant, its pricing doesn't align with any gas-powered versions, presenting an $18,500 increase compared to the 434 horsepower V6 powered GTS. While the appeal of the sound and driving experience of a gas engine Mekong remains strong, the electric version impresses with its modern design and performance. The 2024 Porsche Mekong EV is a new entrant into the luxury electric SUV market and it brings with it the Porsche legacy of performance and style. Here's a quick rundown of its pros and cons. Pros. Performance. The Mekong EV is no slouch. With a claimed 0 to 60 miles per hour time of around 4 seconds, it's one of the quickest SUVs on the market. It also boasts a lower center of gravity than the gasoline-powered Mekong, which translates to sharper handling. Range and charging. Porsche claims the Mekong EV will have a range of around 250 miles on a full charge. That's not quite as long as some rivals, but it should be enough for most everyday needs. The Mekong EV also supports DC fast charging, which can add up to 80% of the battery's range in just 30 minutes. Cons. Price. As you might